Hello, Scott here. Right now you're looking at a picture of a router and you're probably wondering why you're looking at a picture of a router. This is the router that I use here in my computer room. It's a Cisco 861W. It's actually a very capable small commercial router. And if you'll notice there's a little light on here for uh, Fast Ethernet 4 that happens to be the wide area network port. But I notice looking at this light I can't really uh, get a good gauge of how much activity that is. Is one blink a packet? Maybe a blink is 10 packets or 100 packets or 1,000 packets. It's really rather difficult to tell just by looking at that. Now we could load an application on the computer and tell, but what's the fun in that? Better to hack something together. And for that purpose, I give you the Packetron 9000. Switch it on, boot itself up, and it'll start counting packets. It is counting packets on Soviet OG4 Decatron tubes. That's what one of these looks like. These things run off of about 425 volts. And inside of there we also have a uh, parallax propeller microcontroller, an Ethernet port, the whole thing's talking SNMP back and forth to the router, and we can see at a glance just how many packets are going back and forth. So we can look at incoming traffic, at outgoing traffic, both together. We can look at packets, uh, just the unicast packets. So there's uh, some broadcast traffic, other uh, routers in the neighborhood. And we can switch down here and look at octets. Now there's a lot of octets that go by, so we'll do them a thousand at a time instead of one at a time. So let's go back to uh, packet mode. Let's look at some Telnet traffic. So I've switched the Packetron 9000 to look at packets and uh, outgoing packets only. And I've got a Telnet session open and I'll push a key at a fairly slow rate and we see packets going by. Type faster, get more packets. Working as expected. Now looking at packets is fun, but it's not all that informative because we don't know how big a packet is, so how about we'd like a general bandwidth meter so we can look at how much bytes are coming in. So let's, uh, let's switch back to looking at both ins and outs together. We'll switch it down to octet mode. Now in octet mode, each tick over here is going to represent uh, 1,000 bytes. So 1,000 bytes, 10,000 bytes, 100,000 bytes, and 1 million bytes. So let's load my home page. So there's my home page on the website, just refreshed. And I'll hit it again. That's about how many bytes it takes to get the home page. Let's try something like uh, Gmail. There's Gmail. Gmail actually takes quite a bit to get loaded. Let me log into my Gmail account. Loading up the inbox. And uh, loading up the chat window. It actually takes quite a bit of data transfer back and forth to get that chat window open. And there we pretty much have Gmail loaded. Okay, let's see what uh, a YouTube video looks like. Loading YouTube now. It's YouTube buffering. Playing. switch this up to higher definition. There's YouTube. You can see there's most of the traffic's incoming. Not much outgoing traffic. And finally here's some BitTorrent traffic. I've cranked up both the torrent on the laptop and a torrent on the desktop machine so we should be getting a good amount of traffic. See, the vast majority of our traffic is inbound with a little bit going upstream to the other people participating in the torrent. So 
we should be hitting about a megabyte per second at this point. And this is the Packetron 9000. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's somewhat of a frivolous project, but it has given me a very good status indicator to go with my router. Now let's take it over to the bench and look inside and I'll show you how the circuit works. So let's take a look inside the Packetron 9000. So first, what's a Decatron tube? That's a Decatron tube. It's a tube used back in the 1960s for counting. It's got 10 cathodes around in a circle and a couple of guides and if you pulse the guides in the right order it counts around in a circle so you can get it to count to 10. You can tell when it gets to the 10th spot and you generally use that to increment something else. So let's look inside the device here and see how it works. So over here we've got our mains power comes in, goes to the transformer. It's a center tapped 12.6 uh, volt transformer. So we pull off both a 12 and a 6 volt output the 12 volt feeds into this high voltage power supply. The high voltage power supply puts out 425 volts, which then runs into this board here that has some current limiting resistors. We need to limit the amount of current that goes into the decatrons, limiting it to like 3 to 500 microamps, something like that. So it takes our 425 volts, limits it down, where it connects down on the bottom to each decatron uh, anode provides the power to run the decatrons. Also feeds a voltage divider over here on the side that's used to derive about 30 to uh, 60 volts for running the cathodes on the decatrons. So the decatrons have uh, two pins for running the cathodes. One runs cathode 0, which is at the top. The other pin runs cathodes 1 through 10. So what we can do, we want it to boot in a known state, so there's a little relay board over here that shuts off uh, cathodes 1 through 10, so only cathode 0 is enabled when the thing turns on. That will cause each one to start cathode 0, which is at the top, about one second in, it enables the other cathodes, and we're started in a known state. Over here, this is the driver board which drives the guides that run the Decatron tubes. Each tube has two guides. You pulse them in a certain order and you will cause the tube to count around in a circle. And I'm using uh, IRF840 MOSFETs for that. Which is not a particularly good choice because they don't drive very well off a 3.3 volt logic. In fact there were a couple Chinese made ones that I had in here and I actually had to cut them out because they were marginal and they were going into uh, like a linear state. Fortunately, the other supplier, whomever that was, there did work reliably at 3.3 volts, but just barely. So we've got the uh, guide driver board, high voltage power supply, the current limiting resistors, and finally, over here, we have our parallax propeller microcontroller board. So this is a generic board that I designed actually for running a small clock project it has the propeller microcontroller it's a big 40 pin dip package and the thing that's nice about the controller is it has eight cores in it so you don't have to really worry about interrupts or anything you can just program as if you have uh, eight independent CPUs so for example I have uh, one core that, synch that uh, synthesizes the frequency for the decatrons another core that reads that frequency and then counts each Decatron by pulsing the guide wires. Um, another core is using an SPI interface to the uh, Ethernet chip there. That's an ENC28J160 um, Ethernet chip. Another uh, core is uh, getting packets in and out of the Ethernet chip. We've got another core uh, that runs a, a TV output, composite TV output, and another core that's actually uh, writing diagnostic information that TV output so I can use that for uh, debugging when I set the thing up and then finally I've got one master core that reads the state of the input switches um, applies the state of the input switches to figure out uh, which set of uh, counters to send to the uh, decatrons so the way it actually works is it sends SNMP packets, that's the uh, Simple Network Management Protocol, sends those packets to the Cisco router. The Cisco router is a pretty smart router, it understands those. 
and it asks the Cisco router about half a dozen times per second what its current packet counts are on the uh, wide area network interface. So it, the router tells what the packet counts are via SNMP, we read that via the ether Ethernet, go in, we can compute the rate at which packet counts are changing, use that to synthesize the frequency to drive the decatrons. And the nice thing about it is you can actually run the thing, um, doesn't have to be next to the router, it's Ethernet, so I can plug it in anywhere in my network, and it will work. It's kind of a frivolous project, but I wanted to do something deca with decatron, something that was not your average decatron clock, so I've actually got a Decatron packet counter. And that is it for the Packetron 9000.